Amnesty International has called for the urgent eradication of pitch toilets in South Africa following the death of a four-year-old girl whose body was found inside a pitch toilet at a primary school in Glen Gray in the Eastern Cape. According to the 2021 National Education Infrastructure Management System report, more than 1,400 schools in the Eastern Cape had pitch toilets over the last decade. A number of children have died in pitch toilets. For some reaction now on uh, this uh, latest story, we are joined by uh, Minka Statler, the spokesperson at Amnesty International South Africa. A very good evening to you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Now, this child's death comes a week after the Department of Basic Education actually missed yet another deadline to eradicate all illegal plain pitch toilets uh, from South Africa. What seems to be the problem? Communication and, and transparency, of course, it's a huge job to, to eradicate a country of, of, of um, infrastructure that's been there for a long time. But um, the constant moving of deadlines, the constant silence as well, is just really unacceptable. And we could not believe when we uh, received the news yesterday of this little girl being found um, deceased inside a pit toilet. Of course, the police are um, investigating this, but uh, we decided that it was just important to call on government again that these pit toilets really have to be eradicated. Um, you know, whatever the circumstances of her ending up in the toilet, those toilets are incredibly dangerous and and we just cannot accept it anymore. The, the government um, said in 2013 that all the toilets would be identified by 2016 and then eradicated by 2020. That didn't happen of course there was a pandemic which we all know uh, you know affected everybody but then last year minister mocheka said that uh, they were going to eradicate the toilets by the end of this financial year or the end of the 2022 into 2023 financial year which was last week the 28th of february and still no no update from the department of education and uh, and then this tragic event Mm. Now, the police are investigating the circumstances of this child's death, but I'm wondering, will it change anything, the outcome? Because, I mean, unfortunately, the person who became very much the face, the face of young children falling into pit latrines, as you know, Michael Gomabe in Limpopo, and we're, we're, that was years ago. What would change with the police investigation? Yes, no, nothing changes. It, it, uh, it, it. Um, you know, even if the government was to say there's, there's different circumstances around her death, the existence of these toilets and the fact that she was found there and she's so young and vulnerable, uh, just doesn't change the status of and the danger of these toilets. These toilets really uh, violate so many rights: the right to privacy, the right to dignity, the right to sanitation. Uh, you know, the right to. Um, to life in this case as well. And not, as you mentioned, um, uh, Michael, and there was a little boy in December as well in Limpopo. And so there's actually been a number of children. And these, one must also think about is, is are maybe children we know about, right? So uh, we just do not understand why there were still further delays. Last year, they tabled uh, uh, amendments to the regulations around the norms and standards of infrastructure at public schools in South Africa. Amnesty International and a number of other organizations made submissions. In these uh, amendments, uh, the government was saying they wanted to remove all deadlines, for example, and uh, we as an organization said, no, there have to be deadlines. Otherwise, they, you know, it's difficult to then uh, you know, have any legal accountability. Um, but since then, there's been no update on the status of those amendments um, uh, or, you know, on those regulations. And so, and also when we we try to research how many of these toilets still exist or what is the progress that government is making. Uh, there's all these different reports. The annual report says something different from their um, national education infrastructure system reports that they bring out every year. And, uh, and so there's this inconsistency in data and we just feel that goalposts are moved, data is inconsistent 
and there's no real, it appears, political will to do this. Mm. And I want to just reflect on the figures. I think in 2013, the department said about seven and a half thousand schools still had pit latrines. And as you're talking about these amendments, I mean, I looked through some of them earlier on. I, I couldn't really make head or tail of them, but perhaps you mm -hmm. can just tell us. Uh, I mean, one of them says... Um, all schools and classrooms built entirely or substantially from mud, as well as those schools built entirely or substantially from materials such as asbestos, metal, wood, must be replaced with structure uh, compliance with some of these amendments. But has there been any material change? And how many schools are we talking about now today in South Africa uh, that have put latrines? Yes, exactly. So that is one of the, the things that we've pointed out is that when you do go and look at these reports and in the, the different infrastructure programs that the department has, you get different figures. So they did release their annual report quite recently. And in that, they said that there were just under 3000 schools who still have pit latrines. Again, they, they didn't give any real detail around do some of these schools have mixed ablutions? You know, so they might be pit latrines, but maybe there's another option as well. Or do these schools only have pit latrines? And, um, but then when we look at last year's um, National Education Infrastructure Systems Report, which really is quite detailed, then, then, then it's just over 5,000 schools that have pit latrines or pit toilets, you know, their, their toilets. Um, uh, uh, but again, you know, is is this a mix? Are these only uh, pet toilets? We do acknowledge, of course, that this is a huge job, right? This is a this is a, a, a huge thing. There's also a lot of of this infrastructure was built uh, uh, during um, uh, those terrible, the terrible, terrible years of apartheid, um, and so we acknowledge that. But you know, you can't be putting deadlines for yourself and then keep missing them, and then we have a loss of life. It's, it's just unacceptable that a child has to lose her life because of the shortfalls of government and the failures of government. And, uh, you know, how many children in South Africa and families and communities going to have to lose before this is taken seriously? Um, you know, there has to be greater transparency around around the data, how many toilets there really are and and how many of them are plain pit latrines. So to explain is um, mm. those are the ones that are unventilated and unsanitary. I mean, um, they're awful. I mean, you're showing some some visuals here as well. Exactly. Exactly that. And um, they also have to give an update on what is the status of the regulations um, so that, you know, there, there were targets, concrete targets uh, to eradicating this. And um, they really, really um, need to, to stick to deadlines. We can't just keep moving deadlines. If you and I were missing deadlines in our jobs, we would be held accountable. So, you know, the same, the same accounts for government. All right. In short, Pinky, what are you hoping to do as Amnesty International following this case? Are you looking, uh, are you exploring any options that may include legal to compel the government to, you know, meet its obligations and the deadlines, as you say, it set itself? Yes, so so we continue to call on them. We actually did write to them, obviously internally, asking for transparency around this. This was about uh, a month, just under a month ago. We've received no acknowledgement of the reception of the letter. We've received no response. But um, often we understand that obviously the workloads are high, but just acknowledgement of a letter would 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 go a long way. So we are going to make that letter public, and um, we're really just going to talk a lot more publicly about this again with them hoping that they will engage with us um and uh, but um yeah and that is that is what we'll be doing at this stage all right thank you so much minky statler spokesperson at amnesty international